Hey folks, welcome back. This is Lucid, and we are jumping back into our game with Lemuria. And I finally caught up. Uh, this is my current turn, turn 15. So we are live on the server, as you can see in the bottom right. Um, and we've cast Revive Grand Lemur. And we have had some battles. So this will be an exciting turn. It's going to be a one-turn episode. Um, well, first things first, go see what kind of uh, lemur we got. We got the air ones. The air ones are kind of my favorite, guys. I'm not going to lie. First of all, they're just immune to normal troops once you get misform and invulnerability. Um, but uh, they're also the... I mean, you can, you cannot have enough of the air randoms. If I only got air randoms, I'd be fine. It's nice. I mean, all of them are nice. And it's nice having the variety. But the air randoms are my favorite. Wind of death and stuff later. And in fact, if I it could influence what I do after enchantment. Um, if I get a lot of air randoms, I'll probably go evocation. If I don't, I'll probably go alteration. So, anyway. Uh, that was that. Now let's go check out the battles. Um, did I fuck this up? Okay, no. Gotta be careful I don't mess things up because... Uh, this is my live turn. So here, this is our big army. And this is moving... This is the lowest province close to the, the uh, Flegrin Fort that we're attacking. We can see he has just uh, about 6 PD here uh, with one heavy cab and a few crossbow. Uh, this will actually be an okay place for me to put um, PD because it's a good PD type. So if I if I want to do a PD dump somewhere, this is not a... I mean, I can do it in a worse spot. So anyway, that's now mine. Uh, we lost two Dispossessed Spirits. Uh, we got this from him, which is nice. Um, coming down here... Uh, Agartha attacks me because it's his time. Now, this is not an aggressive attack. Uh, this is just his time to attack to take this uh, fort from me that I had promised. Uh, not fort. This province that he I had promised to him. Um, and I think I told... I don't think I... I forgot to tell him that I had one PD here. I told Satis. I just forgot to tell Agartha. Um, if he asked, I would have would have said. Satis asked, which I think is why I told him. Um, I just... I should have mentioned it to him. But uh, anyway, so what we are going to have now is a uh, a death one mage battle. So we've got this guy spamming out undead, and we've got this guy spamming out undead. And they're both priests, so they're both potentially going to make undead and then try to banish them. Um, I've got a little bit of PD here, but this PD is probably going to get butchered before too much happens. We're going to pick the speed up here. Yeah, they immediately run. They like fail a morale check. Peace. Okay, and now my undead is making its way forward, and this is like a kamikaze beam of uh, of undead. You know, blah, blah, you know, you know the thing. Don't pretend you're too cool that you've never seen Dragon Ball Z, because you would definitely be cooler if you didn't see it. But you're probably not that cool if you're watching my channel. You know the kamikaze reference. Now, interestingly, this guy is like, okay, well, I banished these fucking undead. Now I'm going to make more undead. And my guy is like, you've killed all my fucking undead. I'm going to come stab you in the face. And look at him. He's just running forward, running forward, and then kaya. <laughs> I mean, can you believe that? Well, he did unholy power himself, too. He just got angry. Um, I don't think I'll do Unholy Protection on himself. I think I banned those in the AI off-script casting. But So there you go. <coughs> there you go. Uh, he, he failed to take it, which uh, I feel a little guilty about because I should have told him. Um, but on the other hand, uh, this we did find a death site here. And uh, it does give me a little bit of income. So... Uh, I feel bad, but it's also, I mean, I guess it's good for me, but anyway, um, now this is a special, uh, we're attacking, this is his throne province, and here the crossbowman he is guarding, he doesn't have a lot, a lot of PD, and if you recall, I, like, moved all my guys away from the border, uh, the previous turn, 
And so I'm attacking from kind of long distance. He probably did not expect an attack coming. He's got this Phalegran commander. I think this is PD. And he's got this guy who's his prophet. Now this is good and bad because if we kill him, it means his prophet's going to die. And it's bad because he's going to banish the shit out of us. So let's see what happens. Banishment hurts. Hurts so much. I'll kill that priest. Ah, oh, damn it. The priest got away. And his commander. Oh, we got the commander, I think. Yoink. Okay, so we took a lot of losses there. Uh, we lost 17 dudes. But we killed eight of his dudes. His priest escaped, which sucks. Uh, but we got one of the priests and we got his prophet. So all in all a win, but you can see, like if he had 10 PD here, which he probably had six, if he had 10, maybe he had 10. I can't remember, we can actually check. How many does it take to get nine? Yeah, this gives us, I think it was six. So this is seven and then yeah. Anyway. If he had 10, I think he would have won that fight, maybe. Hard to say, because his guys could have routed from a fear check. But anyway, it was close. But was it worth it? Fuck yeah, it was worth it. Now, um, our ghosts are not disposable. That is, I think, a misconception about Lemuria. I mean, they are fleeting. They are going to die. But you don't have, especially you can see right now, we don't have a ton of free spawn production. I mean, we have a fair amount, but we don't have a ton. And what that means is... And especially if we're getting our fort siege down, we're going to need some ghosts. Our ghosts serve several roles. One of the roles is to hold up fort walls, and the other role is to participate in battles. Um, and in the battle against the wrong thing, they're going to get absolutely murdered. Um, the thing they're also necessary for is to crack forts, because my other option for dealing with these guys is going to be consoles. So anyway, a lot to think about. Um, but... Uh, but yeah, we this is so this is not ideal for us, but it was totally worth it to kill this. It's gonna be a while before he gets another profit. And these H3s are much more deadly than the H1s, because it's a bigger area of effect, it's more penetration, it's more damage, it's just worse all around. I think an H3 is significantly worse than three H1s. We killed a normal priest there too, so that's nice. Um So that was this one. Here we see Satis taking his uh, province from me. Which again, I negotiated with him as part of our peace. Now there is a chance, because these guys do not have magic weapons, there is a very real chance um, that I win this fight. Because I blessed, I have regen, my god's awake. Uh, but he, he, fail, he, he fails a morale check, and I'm not exactly sure why. It was only one PD. Normally he won't fail a morale check. Once he was in melee with these guys, these guys, there's a decent chance he would have won. Uh, but that's fine. Not a high chance, but decent. I would say if we did that one, <coughs> that same battle ten times, I bet you we would have won at least three of them. And I know you look at that and you're like, no, there's no way. No, I think it's actually pretty close to that. Um, and then here are two Chad um, Centurions. And uh, they have a thing or two to say to this province defense. Okay, and uh, these guys get the wise idea to get the fuck out. Uh, and that seems to work out well for both of us. Um, so anyway, three successful raids. Uh, we broke down the fort here uh, and destroyed the temple. And then coming over here, we have our throne battle. And let's see if this works. I kind of wasted those disposition spirits. I probably should have put them behind my other units so they got it kind of trapped. Okay, these guys are getting in range of dust to dust over here, which isn't ideal. But these, this is the same idea. These guys were kind of on a flanking position. Okay, it looks like we've caused a general route in the front. 
I don't know if these guys have routed yet. If not, they're gonna be close behind me. They're gonna be routing very, very quickly. We've got this guy who's back here. He's probably going to attract a fair amount of attention from these death mages. Yeah. Just fine. Distract them. Meanwhile, everybody else is routed. And then these guys are making contact before my centurions get over there, which is perfect. Because I don't really want my centurions getting close to the death mages. <coughs> dust to dust coming out, murdering some ghosts. Murdering some more ghosts. Uh, and they have some bodyguards, uh, but uh, they get the, the idea that maybe this isn't a good place to be. And they leave their bodyguards to fucking die while they run off the field. So... Uh, there we go. Take that throne. So let's see what throne we got. That's right, boys. We got the golden throne. This, I will fight a war to keep. I will keep this at almost any cost. Uh, this 200 income is going to be huge. The golden adepts is going to be huge. The fact that I have fire on my god uh, means I can kind of be a fire superpower. Or not superpower, but a major fire player uh, in this game. These guys are good researchers. Uh, yes, 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 yes. Right. Also, cross paths. I get Earth Astral cross path with these guys, which is sick. Uh, solar Eclipse. Um, Astral 3, also pretty useful, just in general. Um, so, yeah, these guys are just really good. They're just really, really good. All of these guys can Soul Slay too, once I can do Power of the Spheres, if I have to worry about thugs or super combatants, which is one of the things that's really annoying for Lemuria to deal with. So yeah, <coughs> uh, this is my current turn. So we're going to go ahead and start building a palisade here pronto. And uh, with that, um, yeah, we're going to patrol with some of these guys and I'm going to start moving the rest up towards this front. Now, Agartha, we're probably going to have a tenuous relationship because I'm now going to have all of these things forded. This one, I don't want to get Dominion in, but and it's got one of his Dominion, thankfully, but that is not going to last for long. My Dominion is very quickly going to push over in here, and once it does, I'm going to be very, very sad to see this go, but we'll uh, we'll have to temple these up. I'm going to avoid claiming this throne, I think, until I have the fort up, because I this is a good throne. I don't want to give any incentive for these guys to attack me before I have it all forted up. Um... So I'm going to be missing out on a fair amount of gold income, and I could to for a while I was thinking, okay, let's rush somebody over there to claim it immediately. And in some ways, that's the best move. But if these guys join in a three-way attack against me, and all they want out of it is just getting this thrown from me, it's going to be pretty shitty. So once I have claimed it, and I have it like at a reasonably high-level fort, um and my dominion is kind of spread over here, the fact of like them getting this and this from me is going to be a lot less appetizing. And the bottom line is once I, once I fort to this, um, uh, and get my dominion spread, this thing, especially with the temple nearby and then the temple here, like four temples nearby and a throne, like this is just going to be destroyed as much as I hate it. Um, because it's really going to hurt me. And the longer this thing lasts, the better. But I don't know. Once that happens, I want to go ahead and just get my Dominion over here. So this is not appetizing for Pythium to take. Because right now, Pythium could take this from me, put a fort in it, and it would be like one of his best provinces. So anyway. Uh, that is kind of the plan. Now, I had some decisions to make this turn. I wanted... To like build a lab here. That's why I had this guy here. So I could go ahead and start recruiting bats. But um, I know a war is coming. There's going to be a big Bogorusian army. And I have no scouts over here. Because reasons. Um, I have no scouts over here to, to, to see it coming. But I'm sure it's coming. I need to go ahead and get these up to, to the top level fort. So we're going to be doing that. This one is already top level. This one we're upgrading to. Hopefully that will give us enough time. Because they can't attack me this turn. If they attack me next turn, I'm still going to be able to finish it, I think. So, that will be good. Because now he's going to have to have a major force. And then when he has a major force, I can kill it with a very serious and angry console. Um, we also, because uh, this is my current turn, and we did all this research with the cursed console, Scassius. Um, we're going to be deploying him to this front. And hopefully, here's what I'm thinking. 
If I'm him, I say, okay, I'm going to send my white bull this way, and then I run my white bull up this way while I maybe... I don't know. It's really hard to know what he's going to do. But wherever his white bull goes, Scassius is going to follow. Um, now, if we are playing Lemuria like, hey, our free spawn doesn't matter, our centurions don't matter, we would just send them in and continue raiding, and like, yeah, we could probably take this, but he, you know, if I were him, I would be like, okay, my first goal is to not lose more provinces. So I would try to catch expanders. So I would send a few priests here. Um, I would put a bit of PD here. <coughs> um, and then have a few priests behind PD is going to be enough to deal with this. Um, I would patrol here. Um, and then I would probably have this army move out and retake this. And then if I have priests or, I don't know, something here, I would probably take these and put them behind the militia and take this. So I'd probably retake these two. I'd probably set up a trap here and here. And probably put just maybe one more priest behind the PD here. So they couldn't get on top of my capital. Which I would love to do, by the way. If these are his only two forts, I can potentially time it where I take both his forts out and he gets no income if I'm sitting on top of them. If you're sitting on top of all their forts, they get literally almost no income, except for the income from inside the fort, which is not much. It'll cut off all the income from all these provinces, which would be huge. Um, I've also gotten a reply back to the message uh, that I sent him the end of last turn, which basically, you know, I was like, hey, if I misread this uh, and you guys aren't about to coalition me, then we can have peace. He's like, well... Uh, I don't think I'm going to opt for peace, uh, and hopefully I get some help from others soon. So yeah, there was a coalition coming. I was not, I was not mistaken. Uh, and so anyway, we're just going to have a have a, a war starting a few turns early uh, with a bit of an advantage in my favor, thanks to me jumping him. Um, and yeah, so we're going to move here. Um, we also got attacked by some Indies at the Throne of Gaia events. One was on top of Lemuria, which thankfully we killed, and then the second one was down here, and it unfortunately killed these guys. Um, so anyway, we're going to be sending this army south. Now from here, we can still check the capital. I mean, this, uh, this fort, which we may choose to do, but I'm not sure. Um, and I may choose to check it with him and Scassius. I'm not sure if Scassius is going to be, we can actually check. What's Scassius's movement here? It's only 16. Okay, the fucker's slow. And there's no way it's going to be 16 movement to get, oh, it is 16. Ooh, it is 16. Oh, wait, no, no, no. Oh, but this guy has mountain survival. Scassius does not have mountain survival. How many is it from here? It's 18, so he's not going to... I can also move Scassius here if I wanted to. Well, Scassius is not going to be able to go many places. From If I move Scassius here, he's only going to be able to move here and here. And if his Great Bull moves here, I can potentially intercept it, which would be good. But the more I think about it, the more I think it's more likely he probably moves the Great Bull up in this direction. And if that's the case, I would kind of rather have Scassius here. But in some ways, this is... Wait, no, but I can move through here because it's heat. It's summer what? Early summer, so it's still going to be a heat crossing. Yeah, and this has his dominion. So from here... No, from here, not even selecting this guy. From here, Scassius can also move down here. So this is definitely the better move for Scassius. From here, he can go here, 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 or here. And I think we've also scripted him. Um, so I've got Scassius with a bunch of crossbowmen moving out. The crossbowmen also, I'm going to try not to use them, I'm, but this is a very safe move, I think, for all the crossbowmen. We'll, we'll position them really far forward. Put them on fire. Um, so, yeah, this guy going here, he's going to go do the event. That's why I'm moving him in. But, um, yeah, Scassius is going to be able to, I guess, go to almost any province I need him to next turn, which will be huge. 
Um, he can come here, 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 here. And he's probably going to murder basically everybody. Um, and ideally, I kill his god. If I kill his god this early in the war, he's going to be in real trouble. And I'm not even sure I would go for peace then. Because his... <sighs> he's going to be in a real tough fight once, I, once my consoles come out. Um, I also want to address a little bit more of my plan in terms of research. So uh, we're doing a lemur console here. Um, once I have construction done, which will be two turns, um, <clears throat> once I have construction finished, uh, we are going to go ahead and make a dusk dagger. And we're moving this guy back home so he can help research a little bit next turn. Uh, but then also he's going to be doing dusk dagger production. And uh, there, I'm going to have two ways to kill Scassius. Um, the way I was originally planning was using a console, I mean, Scassius, to kill um, the big uh, great white bull. One of the ways, uh, which I was not planning on originally, was using Scassius. The second way, the way I was originally planning, uh, is using consoles. Now, the problem with consoles is they're basically like a centurion in terms of they just have a shitty sword, uh, short sword. They're just much harder to kill. Um, and they can do apostasy and stuff, but that's not really going to help versus a great white bull. Um, but if I put two dusk daggers on them, they can kill them. And especially if I do two dusk daggers and a uh, boots of strength. The boots of strength actually, sometimes he's not going to kill it if there's enough enemy dominion with uh, with just two dusk daggers. He's going to need the uh, uh, he's going to need the the boots of strength. So. Anyway, we're gonna have to forge all that. The off my porch is gonna have to waste a turn doing uh, boots of strength, but that's okay. Uh, fortunately, we have earth gems, so we don't have to alchemize or anything. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, that's it. Uh, and the first console we're gonna make is gonna go ahead and become a prophet. And the second console will probably be the guy that we actually end up thugging. The prophet is going to have more useful things to do, like um, a. Basically, he's going to be used to take huge ghost doom stacks and plow into an enemy. And we're going to not do that terribly often. We're not just going to be like a big bully with like 200 ghosts running around pretending like they can't die. Because 200 ghosts die really fast on the right counters. Um, but, you know, what we might do is like this turn a big army appears here. We'll probably go ahead and get where I can take all my ghosts and consolidate them as much as I can into this fort. And if we have this guy come out in time, he will maybe, depending on the timing, wait, let's see, next turn he'll be out. There'll be an army here. We'll give him the profit order. Turn after, they'll attack. He'll be a profit. So then he'll be able to take, we'll be able to basically take all the troops we've generated, consolidate them all here, potentially also with the crossbows, do a PD dump here, because we're, don't forget, we're rich as fuck. Put our troops behind the PD dump, crossbows, Scassius, our second console, whoever we want, and just have a big fucking battle. And if we kill them, um, that will actually give us, I think, enough time to eat Flegra. That's like best case. Worst case is they kill all my guy. I mean, there's a lot of different ways things. There's only one way things can go well. There's many ways things can go poorly. <coughs> So anyway, um, we are going to raid this. Um, and my thinking is that even if he moves the militia here, we'll still be able to kill it. If he moves the militia here, there's a small chance this guy will actually will be able to kill militia because militia suck. Um, but we'll see. I'm basically just abandoning most all the provinces I took. We'll see what he... We'll just let him kind of come back and take it from me. Um, and yeah, that's basically it. That's basically it. Um, forting this up, securing this part of the map. Fort's coming up here. Next turn, uh, hopefully we build a lab here. Um, Agartha will take this from me soon, I'm sure. And, uh, yeah, I think that's it. Take care, guys. See you next time.